Good morning, all. Good to see you today. We're going to start this morning but with the announcements and all that sort of thing. And uh, then uh, Ben is going to help us as we begin our official worship time this morning. Well, you look good. How do you feel? Great. Great? I could we get it in writing? Somebody said, the, uh, somebody told me one time that I, I looked great. That so, yeah, that said, looks, you look like just like somebody who's had his face pulled across three or four grades. So I, I don't know. I don't know how that works. Thank you for being here. Um, kind of a busy week, so if you'd pay attention for a, a few minutes... I guess there's one correction I have here from Ruth. Please announce the ABW Ladies' Luncheon is tomorrow, Monday, at 11, not 11.30. Okay? So the uh, luncheon tomorrow. So don't come at 11.30, I guess. And also, this morning, uh, some uh, not-too-good news for those who go to Sunday school. Uh, Lynette O'Beck, they have a sick household, so there will not be a Sunday school class uh, this morning. They, they can't be here, so I guess they'll just have to stay in church this morning. So be nice to them. They might want to come back. And notice the, the flyer uh, in, in, the, uh, in your bulletin. Remember Thursday evening. It's coming up fast. It does, doesn't it? It comes so fast. Thursday evening at 7 o'clock, um, Ernie and Jason Couch uh, here with uh, Revival at, um, on Thursday night. I've heard them before. Uh, they advertise themselves as um, uh, a family entertainment with a message. I got it. Family entertainment with a message. So uh, let me encourage you to bring family along. And there'll be a few things to laugh about, maybe even some things to cry about, um, and all of that. And uh, then on the other side, uh, the uh, prayer schedule, the meeting schedule for uh, the, the thing we've been talking about, 10 days of prayer. And so take this and be reminded, it begins uh, again this Thursday evening at County Road, and then you'll see the um, sequence of uh, 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 gatherings. And uh, there are some flyers back there on the back table with reference to the 10 days of prayer. You may want to take them and uh, help pass the word uh, to folks, if, if you will. Notice the, uh, all the announcements in the, in the bulletin uh, for this week, and then um, moving on ahead. Uh, Gail is here. And Roseanne isn't. Oh, oh, she's she's not sitting in the right place. <laughs> How dare you? Uh, thank you, ladies, and all your helpers for the meal on Thursday night. They got quite a lot of applause. If you were there, you know why they got applause. And uh, so it was very good. Well, you can do it again if you want to. Uh, notice... Yeah, all the other announcements that are in the bulletin. It's uh, uh, the beginning of the fall season, and we're looking ahead to a lot of changes. A lot of changes. Anybody know that of which I speak? Well, we all hope that he or potentially she will be handsome, young, <laughs> smart, good, perfect, right? And as they say in the South, pastor or preacher, either one. Did you ever notice how Pastor Myers would talk funny? Did you ever notice that? <laughs> Yeah, and he was here 12 years, 
And I bet he went back down to Ohio and still can't speak good English. <laughs> Don't you? So we kind of wonder, we kind of wonder what that person's going to be like. Changes in the air, isn't it? Yeah. And all God's people said, Amen. All God's people said what? Amen. That's a little better. I'm beginning to wonder about you people. <laughs> Ben's going to come in just a minute and lead us as we prepare ourselves for worship. So let's pray for just a moment. Lord, we do know that change is in the air. We feel it in the weather. We sense it. Well, and we know it. And we thank you, Lord, for being in our lives to manage all the change in our lives and in the world. So in that spirit, we've come here today to worship. And as we worship, we pray that we'd be very sensitive to you, to your leadership, to what you will do. And all of this we pray with expectation, anticipation, in Jesus' name. Ben's going to lead us. Thank you, Ben. And Mr. Veracini would have been proud. I can even pronounce those Italian names. <laughs> Very good. It was quite a long time ago, probably, it seems like way to some of us, that we were um, hearing a name like Norman Clayton. You never heard of him. But he wrote 
hymn number 511. And Mr. Clayton was a song leader, a composer, and gave us some very good thoughts as he put together, Now I Belong to Jesus, hymn number 511. Let's stand and sing it together, please. God, we thank you for people of inspiration who received from you that gift of putting to word and music the truth of our own emotions. Thank you for allowing us the privilege of being called yours, to be called your children, to belong to you. And in that same mysterious manner that somehow you belong to us. We're a part of the same family. And now, Lord, we've come to celebrate that as we worship you here in this place dedicated to you, to your worship, to learning about you, and from which we can serve you today and in the days to come, all, all in the name of Jesus who taught us all to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, Thank you. Be seated, please. And Emily has a word for us today. Good morning. Does anybody have a rainbow to start with? Because I have a rainbow. Ben's playing was excellent. And that cheered my heart. 
And that is my rainbow, and thank you, Ben. Johnny. I watched Dolphin Tail 2 yesterday. What movie, huh? We went to the Canadian movie theaters, and Johnny saw Dolphin Tail, and I saw Maze Runner. Were you scared? Yeah. <laughs> I read that on Facebook. <laughs> <laughs> Sammy? I went biking with my granny. Cool. That's great. Love to spend time with our grannies, don't we? Well, I've got a secret for you guys. Don't listen, Pastor. I forgot I had children's story today, and I didn't prepare anything. So now we have to wing it. But just like Sunday school was canceled because something happened, things happen sometimes, and we just plug on. And this made me think of something. Do you think Jesus forgets? No, I don't think Jesus forgets either. Sometimes we wonder, because when we pray, sometimes it takes a long time for an answer, and we might think that he forgot us. But I don't believe Jesus ever forgets us. He's always there. We can always ask, and in time, he will answer. Not always the answer we want, maybe, but an answer, because he knows the best way for us to go, and we need to listen. Ben? If it weren't for him, I wouldn't be playing violin right now, and I wouldn't, I would be too nervous to stand up in front of people and play. You are so right. And if it wasn't for him, I wouldn't know what to say right now either. <laughs> <laughs> so we have lots to thank him for, right? <laughs> so let's bow our heads in prayer, and don't forget, you're going to stay up and enjoy church this morning. You're going to be one of the big people. Dear Heavenly Father, we do thank you for these children that come to church and that they want to learn. And we love the thought that they know that you are the one that's putting the talent in them and the bravery to stand up in front of a crowd and just to do the things that make you so proud of our stay here on earth. Be with us each and every day, Lord. Amen. Thank you. <laughs> thank you. Oh, I forgot. I didn't really forget. It's right here. Um, blessings and concerns. Anybody have a blessing to share? Anybody have a concern to share? Anybody have anything at all you want to talk about? <laughs> Harvest is a blessing, and we pray for a good harvest. I remember a story about somebody who, when she was young, didn't like getting up in the morning and going out at harvest time. And then later in life, she really began to appreciate it. So that's the way it is with many of us, isn't it? The older we get, the more we appreciate stuff that sometimes seems not right. All right. Okay. That was a lovely plot. Mary did not even ask her to do that. Okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's a concern. She's she's raising a concern. Yeah. All right. Anything else? Yeah. It's a real blessing to see the Walkers all back in church again. Mm-hmm. Let's pray. Father, you do bless us. You, oh, forgive us when we forget to say so. You, you bring blessings to our lives. You allow us to see things, to experience things that sometimes we so take for granted. 
the blessings of the harvest, uh, the apple trees that have been producing their fruit, and the crispness in the air that we sense and feel right now. The beauty that's just about to surround us all in this part of the country. Lord, we thank you for those gifts that you mercifully uh, give us and uh, forgive us when we forget to say thank you. Lord, it's a little more difficult and a little easy, a little more difficult to forget our concerns. We, we, we tend to bring them to you sometimes rather sarcastically, sometimes, Lord, out of some sense of desperation, and probably less often thanking you for the concerns of life, those difficult places that you take us to and through. But Lord, today we want to thank you for being our Redeemer on the other side of the great difficulties of life. For being a person who would forgive us for our failures, our sins, to reconcile us, bring us back home again to you. Lord, we are so thankful to you that even in the difficulties, you are present. And you give us that grace, that gift of endurance, to recognize that beyond the difficulty, you stand welcoming us toward you, embracing us in our difficult times, and promising us that there is more to life than what our difficulties and our concerns bring to us. Help us to learn from your word. Help us to hear you clearly. And two, as the Bible asks us to keep our eyes on you, the beginner and perfecter of our faith. All of these things we pray in the powerful, eternal, capable name of Jesus Christ, our living Lord, our Savior. In his name then, amen. The ushers are prepared this morning to receive your tithes and offerings, and as always, we give unto the Lord.
God, we are thankful, and we give you these gifts out of our thanksgiving. We thank you for providing our needs. And now we pray that these gifts would provide the needs of your kingdom here and from here through the world, a world that needs you. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Before you're seated, greet each other. Thank you. Samson. If you're able, why don't you remain standing? Because I know this first one, it's going to be easier to sing it while you're standing up. So would you remain standing, if you're able, uh, while we're led in these, this good music? We're missing somebody. <laughs> she forgot. She had to go to work. She's, re she's really after that raise, you know.
Well, it's my turn, I guess, isn't it? <laughs> You've heard that phrase uh, that uh, we put in the bulletin here, eyes on the prize. Now, when you see that phrase, probably brings to your attention a number of things. Um, Maybe some of you might have even at one time in your life, maybe even recently, been a long-distance runner. And what do they tell you about that? You have to keep your eyes on the prize, on the end, or you'll never make it. Have that endurance to get to the end. Now, somebody wisely says, to keep your eyes on the prize in a race, very important, to understand the significance of getting there, but you also got to keep your eyes, your mind, on where you're stepping on the way. It's kind of a, it's kind of a multitasking eyes on the prize. That the long range is important, but you don't want something short term to make you slip up. I remember when I was a freshman in college. Now, I know you're going to say you don't even have that good a memory. <laughs> but, uh, but I remember being introduced to a word that I'd never heard in my life. I was in the school of education. Uh, music education was a major. But this professor introduced me to this word. And he said it very profoundly. The word was gestalt. It's a German word, gestalt. And I found out at least what he thought that word meant. But we had to kind of learn some things that he was teaching about it. And one of the things that he taught us was gestalt means get the whole thing in mind. You get the overview. Understand what this thing is all about. And, he's, and he taught us that Gestalt really means this. I don't know, but this is what he said. The whole is greater than the sum of its parts. Now that's profound. You don't think so? Well, he told us it was. <laughs> and it was. And I began to think about that. And you know it's really true. The whole in math, you, you, uh, in arithmetic, you, know, you learn 2 plus 2 plus 2 is not 4. <laughs> you figure all that out. So you add them up together. And it seems like that the sum of those individual parts, in math at least, is supposed to equal the answer you get. But somehow in this gestalt business, the whole, the idea, is bigger than all the pieces that make it up. Well, how does that have to do with the Bible? Well, in one place in the Bible, Paul's writing to Timothy, and he said, in the last days, some of, we've been talking about this in some places in the church, in the last days, people will have a form, or you could say forms, of godliness. You know the rest of the, of the verse? But deny the power of it. The forms of godliness, but denying the power of it. So, the idea is keep your eye on the prize. Where is the power? Don't go this way and that way and try to figure out where you are. Keep your eyes on the prize. His name was Joshua. There's a book in the Bible named for him. You know that book? And Joshua, oh, he grew up in the shadow of Moses, who was no small hero. Moses died. And so the word came to Joshua. Keep your eye on the prize. Well, not exactly in those words. Keep your nose to the grindstone. Not exactly in those words. 
Set your mind on the important stuff. We're getting closer. My word. Turn not to the right or to the left. Keep your eyes on the prize. Be of good courage. Be strong. And I'll get you there. We were studying the book of Hebrews not very long ago here in the church. Um, a lot of lessons in there. Chapter 12. Since we're surrounded by such a great cloud of witnesses, here's the instruction. Let us, you've got it memorized, many of you. Let us lay aside, put aside, drop off, get rid of any weight that encumbers us. Let us get rid of those weights that hold us back. And, I like this part, every sin that so easily, anybody know the next word? Entangles us. Don't you love it? Let us lay aside every weight and sin and let us run with perseverance the race that is set before us looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith. Well, eyes on the prize. In our text today, Philippians chapter 3. Oh, I'm going to start a little earlier. I'm going to start reading in verse 7. Philippians chapter 3, verse 7. And if you have your Bibles there, follow along. I'm reading this morning from the New King James. But what things were gained to me, these I have counted loss for Christ. Yet indeed I also count all things loss for the excellency of the knowledge of Christ Jesus my Lord. Let me read it again. Yet indeed I also count all things loss for the excellence of the knowledge of Christ Jesus my Lord, for whom I have suffered the loss of all things and count them as rubbish that I may gain Christ and be found in him, not having my own righteousness, which is from the law, but that which is through faith in Christ, the righteousness which is from God by faith, that I may know him and the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of his sufferings being conformed to his death, if by any means I may attain to the resurrection from the dead. Not that I have already attained or am already perfected, but I press on that I may lay hold of that for which Christ Jesus has also laid hold of me. Brethren, I do not count myself to have apprehended, but one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forward to those things which are ahead, I press toward the goal for the prize of the upward call of God in Christ Jesus. Hmm. I press toward the goal for the prize of the upward call of God in Christ Jesus. Let's pray just for a minute. Lord, it's simple enough. Paul said it. We echo it. We press on toward you, toward your call, the call upward in life now. Toward you forever. In Jesus' name, amen. I don't know 
if we can do any better than what Paul did in Philippians here to echo that, that little phrase, eyes on the prize. But I think we get the point that there was something driving Paul. And in most of the book of Philippians, what we're discovering is he loves this word joy. We talked about it, and, and we'll talk about it again. The idea of joy, it just, well, to choose God seems so reasonable, and it brings joyful life. We like to see joyful expression on people's faces. And sometimes we get caught in, in that, thinking everything needs to be nice. God's grace just puts a covering over us to protect us and keep everything good. And then we hit a bump. We hit a big bump. It hurts. And we can't explain it. You've been there. All of us have in some measure. And sometimes it's very, very painful. So Paul here in this third chapter of his book gives us a reminder that we thank God every time we remember and we rejoice in the memorial supper for what Christ has done for us we thank Him for the grace and for the mercy that pervades our lives and surrounds our lives. But there are times also when we need to be like Jesus, not full of grace and mercy, but full of endurance to get through the tough time. And He talks about this. And in verse 10, He uses this phrase, that I may know Him and the power of His resurrection. Wow, that's Easter. That's wonderful to come together at Easter time and celebrate life after death. This wonderful power, and the word for power is the same one we use for dynamite. It's explosive power of his resurrection. And we enjoy thinking about that life, life abundant here and now, life everlasting after we've gone th through the death moment. That I may... I, that I may know him and the power of his resurrection. But he also said that I may know him and the fellowship of his sufferings. That what Jesus went through for us, we'll never have to experience that. But sometimes we feel like we come pretty close. Pretty close. We're walking right up to the edge. I've been at the edge. I remember the first time that I was on knife edge. Ever been there? Oh, it's an experience. And the climb up, that was horrible. <laughs> For fat boys, it was horrible. But we got there. And I was with a bunch of young kids at the time. And they were up on the top of that thing laughing and joking and celebrating, and I was puffing and saying, I'm glad too. I'm glad I'm here, not there. And then they said, we're going to cross Knife Edge. And I said, we're going to what? Because I looked out there, if you're up there, and, and you look out there from Baxter Peak over toward Pomola Peak, all you see is this little tiny thing. It's just about this wide going across there. And I was looking out there, and by the way, I have to be honest with you that a big part of the commitment that I made to go was because I didn't want to embarrass myself with these brigade boys, little boys, little <laughs> brats. But, <laughs> but at any rate, that, that wasn't the worst of it because coming the other way, across this way toward me, was a middle-aged mother and a a, about a 12 or 13 year old girl coming this way and all those boys looking at me <laughs> you know no way could I turn back now you can't do it <laughs> there are some times when you face your enemies through shame or whatever reason it is but when you're out there and you're looking over the edge you get used to it after a while 
I remember a man who comes to this church once in a while, and he talks about the first time he went over, he had on a pair of blue jeans, new blue jeans. When he got to the other side, he didn't have a seat in his <laughs> new blue jeans. And I think you can understand why, and I could understand why, but there are times in your life when you a little bit feel like you're looking into eternity. You just get that, that glimpse from way high up there. Down at uh, Acadia National Park, I remember the first time standing above those cliffs. And you, you're, you, isn't that stupid? You're feeling like you're going to tip right over. There, there are times in life where we tend to back away. But in those small things, we know if we gain the victory, we won't be as afraid the next time. There's an old song I remember learning a long time ago when I was a kid. Yield not to temptation. You know the next line? For yielding is sin. Each victory will help you some other to win. Fight manfully onward. Dark passions subdue. You know the next line? Look ever to Jesus. He'll carry you through. And you know, that song, we, we, I guess we sang it a lot back there when I was a kid. But those words have stuck with me. And there is some sense in which when we face our fears, when we face our enemies, how, how was that phrase? I faced my enemy and found out that it was me. So Paul says, keep your eyes on the prize. Know the destination. Know where you're going. I've suggested that to this church. I think it's a good suggestion <laughs> that you keep your eyes on the prize and translate that for us. Get going in the right direction first. When you know you're going in the right direction, then you make good decisions. If you're going in the wrong direction, what difference does it make? What decisions you make? So the important thing for the church and for an individual person is to make sure you're going in the right direction. The imaging of the Lord God out there with outstretched arms moving toward Him, the right direction. Then you make decisions along the way. Sometimes they're hard. Sometimes they're easy. We like the easy ones. But it's the hard ones sometimes that teach us the most. And we move through and we say, thank you, Lord. Ever been there? Sure you have. You've been there. Eyes on the prize. Paul said very clearly, I'm going to read him again. Got to find him first. Verses 13 and 14. He had been talking about pressing on. And then verse 13, Brethren, I do not count myself to have apprehended. In other words, I'm just not there yet. Life is a journey. We're not finished until we're finished. A great philosopher said that. You know, remember, Yogi Berra, taint over till it's over. Well, it's not finished until it's finished. I count, I do not count myself to, to have apprehended. But one thing I do, one thing I do, talk about a motto, forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forward to the things which are ahead, I press Toward. I press on. I press toward the goal for the upward call of God in Christ Jesus. For the upward call of God in Christ Jesus. I remember seeing on the masthead of some church somewhere, sometime, maybe more than one, onward and upward. Yeah, you've seen it too. Onward and upward. We move on and we, we're always moving upward. We don't believe in going back. We don't believe in going down. 
we believe in going onward and toward the upward call. Onward and upward. And so Paul identifies this as the prize toward which he's going. And then he suggests to the church, let's go. Let's roll. Let's see it happen. And let's enjoy the trip. That's where that joy comes in, enjoying and rejoicing to enjoy the trip. We press on toward the goal, goal of the upward call in Christ Jesus, the Lord of the church. In Paul's writings, when he writes to every church that he wrote to in the New Testament, he has a couple of phrases that keep coming back. And the big one that he uses a lot is in Christ, to be in Christ. And the picture that he's trying to portray is the body. And each member of us, each person of us, are in the body of Christ. That's another phrase that Paul uses. And to be in Christ means to be folded in, that you can't separate the church, us, we, and Jesus Christ. We are in Christ. And then the other phrase that Paul uses is Christ in you. Oh, yeah, confusing. That's one of those... That's one of those things you walk to the precipice, and it does get a little confusing sometimes. But how can you be in Christ and then have Christ in you? I don't know, but that's what the Bible says. So get with the program. To have, for us to be in Christ, to be wedded into Christ, to be a part of the body of Christ, subject to the claims of Christ, subject to the call of Christ, subject to the purposes of God in Christ Jesus, who said... Christ in you, the hope of glory. So that Christ working himself out in us, Christ working through us, becomes the hope for the world, as well as us. Eyes on the prize. Nothing less will do. If we take our focus off of Jesus Christ, and we put it on whatever we want, comfort, pleasing, pleasant, um, mm, mm. I'm trying to think how to introduce Abraham Maslow to you. <laughs> I don't quite know how. But Abraham Maslow was a Jewish man. Some of you have studied Abraham Maslow. He was the guy who came up with the word, the, the phrase self-actualization. And what, a motiv what motivates us? What, what motivates people? And he, he has these levels of Motivation, uh, motivation for survival. It's kind of there at the base. And then once we've gotten past that, he would say we, we're motivated by safety issues. Once we get ourselves to the place where we're surviving, then we hire a policeman. You know, you get that safety issue. And then you kind of keep moving up the levels to uh, the, the need to be together. The, the need to, to have a family uh, and uh, uh, responses and that sort of thing. And then up at the top of his first list, he had this phrase he calls self-actualization, where we finally grow in, up into who we are and we have that, that sense. There was a theologian named Keith Miller who called that becoming, becoming who we are in God. And, and, and he used that idea that we become fully aware of who we are when we are in Christ. That was what Keith Miller said, that when we come into Christ, we begin to understand who we are as well as whose we are, to whom we belong. So the eyes on the prize is this process of all humanity moving ultimately toward God. God at the apex 
That's a little bit of what the Bible is about, isn't it? So as we think about who we are and whose we are, we respond to the upward call of God in Christ Jesus. Remember last week in the other chapter, have this mind in you which was in Christ Jesus. Though he was in the form of God, he did not count equality with God, something to be grasped, to be held onto, but emptied himself, taking on human form, made in the likeness of man, becoming a servant. Have this, that mind in you, he would say. And now here in chapter 3, he reminds us that even when we're called in all of our lives onward and upward, we keep our eyes on the Lord who in his humanness went to death. those moments in life when it just seems too tough to bear. We keep our eyes on the prize, the upward call of God in Christ Jesus. Paul wrote to another church at another time, church in Corinth, and he said this, If any man, woman, boy, or girl, if any man is in Christ... He is a new creature. The old has passed away. Behold, the new in the King James has come. And there's another translation. The new has come. The new is coming. The new will come. As we make our paths, the paths that Jesus trod. So whether we are facing ourselves, whether we are facing those difficult moments, including death, our own or somebody else's, we do it in the name of and in the power of Jesus Christ. Who, for, Hebrews now, book of Hebrews, who for the joy set before him endured the cross, despising its shame, and is now sat down at the right hand of the Father. Eyes on the prize. So we align our lives with the purposes and the person of Jesus Christ, who is in you, who is moving through you, and moving with you to the end that Jesus Christ be praised to the glory of God the Father. Isn't that something? Powerful stuff. Let's pray. Lord, we, we do see through a clouded glass sometimes. And we want to see clearly, and we know the time will come when we will see clearly. We grow up. We grow with you. We grow through you. We grow toward you. So, Lord, watch us, watch over us, and receive us each and all in the name and the power of Jesus Christ, who for the joy of heaven endured earth and its worst. Grant us joy now, grant us joy hereafter, always and forever, in the name of Jesus, in whose name we pray, amen. Something beautiful, something good, all my confusion he understood. All I had to offer him was brokenness and strife, but he made something beautiful of my Life. Hymn number 519. We'll sing it twice. Let's stand and sing it together.
is making, has made, is making, will make something beautiful out of you. Let's pray. God, thank you. Thank you for making us a work in progress. Help us to make sure that our progress is always toward you. Thank you for making this assembly to be a church. Guide us. Bless us as you make us blessing. Blessing to you and to the world into which you came and gave your all. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen.